Hey everyone and welcome. We are Next Level Business Advisors and this is Business Stories of Success. If you want to break through and achieve your own business success by learning from other successful business owners, you're in the right channel. For more of our content, make sure you click subscribe and don't forget the bell icon so you're the first to be notified when new videos are added. Enjoy today's video. Hello, hello, hello. You're with Mark Adams with Next Level Business Advisors and we're here bringing you another guest. We're excited to introduce Jay Haleem Washington, and he is the owner of I Won't Starve Academy. I mean, that says it all, doesn't it? Hey, brother, welcome, welcome. Nice to have you. Thank you so, so much for having me. I appreciate you, man. Hey, man, it's my pleasure. I just want to let the audience know when we chatted a couple of weeks back or a week ago, you had me on the floor. <laughs> I'm excited to have this discussion with you, and I, you, you actually inspired me. So I, I'm excited to have people hear your story. So before I start talking too much, tell us about yourself. Who are you? Tell us a little bit about you and your business. Oh man, so uh, I'm young, young cat. I'm fairly, uh, fairly young. I'll be 40 this year. <laughs> but uh, I've been in enough. entrepreneurship for 20 years. You know, I uh, from Newark, New Jersey. Came to South Carolina for college. Did the college thing, but I got in trouble while I was in college. Brought a little bit too much Newark down south with me, and uh, <laughs> so when I ended up graduating college, you know, I graduated an honor student, but I couldn't get a job um, because of my background. So I went right into full time entrepreneurship, and um, been going strong ever since. Of course, we went through the uh, Great Recession um, here in South Carolina, where I am now. I'm back here. Um, we went through a thousand year flood back in 2015 and now we're in the pandemic and I just grew through all of those things. I remember running to South Carolina during a great recession, but during the thousand year flood that we had, which affected businesses just as well as, um, like a COVID-19 or anything else, um, at least just here though, ge um, geographically, we were hurting, but I didn't run. At that point was the time when I was saying I was going to stand and fight. And, um, after that, my, my business just soared. You know, I'm a commercial photographer by trade. You know, I've worked with companies like Nike, worked with Save the Children Foundation, you know, worked with the National Guard, pretty much anybody that's anybody around this area in the Southeast, you know, law from law firms to, you know, Amtrak, you know, um, also do a lot of uh, forensic work as well. I've done over my, over the years. So, you know, I've been able to move and, and grow a business in that space. And I went into the corporate commercial side of business where I started meeting government, working with government entities, state, local government, federal government. And I got a passion for, uh, you know, consulting at that point because my camera put me in places that other people that's like me couldn't go, you know? And so, um, you know, I, I just did the Super Bowl this past year, 2020. So I, my Woo! camera put me in different places where I couldn't go, where other people couldn't go. So um, in the process of coming down here, you know, uh, it was rough and I had to take a crappy job. Again, the, the background comes up. The $8 an hour job while I was building my photography business. Um, I stayed for about a year before I went off again on my own, 100%. But I, when I did leave, I, I picked up this mantra called I Won't Starve because everybody knew that, you know, that was around me, knew we were going through it. And I'm, I'm, I got a wife and two kids. And I said, I just told him I won't starve because I knew that, I was able to do this and, and I lived in DC. I'm from the Jersey area. I'm like, this is nothing. I can do this again. You know, I can definitely <laughs> do this again. And everybody was worried and concerned. I was like, look, I won't starve. And I never looked back. I never, I never had to look back. And so um, people wanted to know my story. I was just so excited about the, the, the growth that happened. I wanted to give it back to other individuals. So we created our nice. Star Academy for me to start teaching. So first thing I did was create a I Won't Starve Entrepreneur Development Workshop. It was, um, we called it the I Won't Starve Experience. Now it was a one day workshop for hours where we brought in new potential entrepreneurs and we just motivated them. We motivated the hell out of them for four hours. But the key was to bring those partnerships that I've, uh, I've gotten to help them out. And so we had the city of Columbia who I had a contract with at that time. They came in to help out. Then we had the state of South Carolina, well, SNBCC, this is the Small Minority um, um, Contracting Commission. We had them come out, and then we had a, um, a local college, Midlands Technical College, come out. And these are people who I was contracted with, I worked with, but I knew that they had the resources that I didn't have right. to give to people. So 
again, as I told you off camera, I'm a salesman. So I let them know I can, I can pack the house, but I'm going to need you. Once we motivate them, we, go, we don't need them to go away. You know how you do in church, they get motivated and you got to go back out to the world. No, I want them to get what they need to get today. And so they, they came on and they were able to help people get in trainings, help people get funding, things that they needed to get to actually go off and start their business. And we've been going on ever since. And so nice, um, you nice. Know, I Won't Stop Academy, is, we've helped over 500 businesses get started you know, in this nice. area. And recently we've been working with people all over the country. My last class, 10 week class was, you know, with people from the East coast all the way to the West coast. Cool. Very cool. Was it virtual or live? Virtual, virtual. I was nice. one of the first people <laughs> <laughs> I jumped right on it. You know, we, we were prepared, you know, we saw what was going on. I, I did a, I did my first workshop. I did a market research workshop virtually and I just taught, taught on market research and it worked out. You know, um, nice. and and after that, we just ran, we just ran with it, started doing everything virtually because we, I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely changed the game, right? I mean, think about it. <clears throat> Without Zoom, I'd never have met you, right? Yeah, we, right? We connected online. I've been doing these podcasts now. I think you're like, I'm in my 20s now, so it's just, it's starting to creep up, which is kind of fun. But it's not like just people in Jersey. Like you remember, I remember you told me you're from Newark. My wife is from Newark, right? So it's not just local. It's all over the country. I mean, I've actually interviewed people in Ireland. and I'm like, whoa, you know. So, yeah, smart. And in fact, this is a good lesson while, while we're chatting, right? About This is about business success. Business owners who are successful are adaptable, right? Yeah. They, see, they see the trends. And they gear and move their business toward that trend, right? Yeah. Not they, they don't become entrenched in their own ideologies, right? I don't care what happens with this pandemic. If you don't come and see me, face, no, it'll <laughs> never work, right? So, I mean, that's a real, that, yeah, right? That's an amazing story right there. I love it. And I love, you, yeah, you told me, I'm going to pull your card. You told me that you wrote a book said, that's called I Won't Star. Yes, yes, yes. But this is the thing. All that stuff happened before I wrote the book. So really? that was the funny part. <laughs> I didn't write the book first. It was, you learned you know, everything and then wrote the book. Yeah, see, I, I, I did the workshop. You know, I did the workshop first. And, you know, um, I, I, you know, I did five workshops before. I released, okay. the, book. <laughs> I released the book on my fifth workshop. <laughs> okay, okay. Hey, I'm not mad at that. I'm not, I love it, though. That's cool because... You know, some people write nowadays, man, they don't know what they're talking about. They just write anyway. <laughs> you got, and I'm, I'm digressing because we're, I'm going to ask you this question, but you got some experience behind your words. That's what we love, right? Yeah. But before I get into that, I want to make sure I get my bookkeeping right. I always call it bookkeeping. Uh, somebody want to find you. How do we find you? Do you have a website? What's your number? How can we reach you? It's a, I have a bunch of them. <laughs> okay. But, uh, on social media, I'm, I am Jay Halim on all my social media accounts. Um, www.jhaleem.com um, I won't starve academy.org um, nice. yeah so those those are the main ones again um, you'll find me jhaleem.com I won't starve academy.org um, it's a 501c3 so you can go over there and see what nice. you can do with that nice nice and now I know you've been in a, a lot of you're um, I'm not going to call you an entrepreneur I'm going to call you a multipreneur I just made that one up. That one's mine. You're a multipreneur, right? So how long have you been in the photography business? Oh, man, only like eight years, man. Only about eight years now. Nice, I, nice. I didn't. I never wanted to be a photographer. I hated it, you know, like, <laughs> seriously. Um, my daughter's my daughter's 12. She'll be 13. So when she was born, I, right before she was born, I got a camera. And I just wanted to film her. I always loved film. I'm a movie buff. That's one of my things. I love watching movies. Um, and so I wanted to film my daughter's first year, and which I was able to do. I filmed every major moment in her life. I mean, uh, nice. first. So um, that's what I got a camera for. And then I got into the, um, I got into media. I got it. I got started a blog, and um, I was able to interview a bunch of celebrities. Man, you know, I got into that black blogging boom around 2009, 2010. This is where you start to see, you know, a lot of the bigger blogs that was out, like thisis50.com and world star hip hop and um, global grind and all those type of things that was out that came out around the same time. So I got into that and I was able to work with a lot of celebrities. You know, I worked with the biggest is maybe the ice cube to nephew Tommy to 
um, Tony Rock, and some a whole bunch of other people, Diggy Simmons, Meek Mill when he first came out, Rick Ross, a whole bunch of people. And, um, you know, DJ Khaled, this is before he was this DJ Khaled. I got okay. with him before he became that DJ Khaled. Okay. So, you know, I, I work with a lot of people, and then um, people always ask me to take pictures, and I'm like, no, I got this camera because the camera started switching. No one wasn't using the big camcorders. They were using the DSLRs that was really for photography, but they were filming with those. And so when they see it, they're like, oh, you're a photographer. I'm like, no, I'm coming here to film something. <laughs> And that was that. And um, but when I got to South Carolina, it was so bad. I just, I'm like, man, I know how to take a picture. So I'm going to do it because I needed some right. money. Right, and then right. it got real bad. So I sold my camera. Be honest with you, I sold it. I was in church oh. at the time. I sold it to my pastor. And he ended up, what made me take it seriously, he gave it back to me two weeks later and told me I need to do something with it. And I asked oh, him wow. to give him the money back. And I said, no. He said, no. And I said, I, from an integrity space, I said, well, I got I to gotta rock out with it if that's what you're going to do. And um, I just went went hard with it from that point on. But yeah, I never liked it at that time. I love it now, um, especially you know what I do with it. I had to find my way, but I I, I hated it. I hated businesses that make you feel like the help. Oh, okay, I got you. It's interesting because I always thought <clears throat> that w when it comes to business ownership and stuff, a lot of times it's how you comport yourself right because uh, people will look at you like okay you're the employee until you say no 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 no. i'm the, I'm the man I, I run this business you know and we we're going to collaborate and you know when i when i met you and we were chatting i can tell that's how you've uh, evolved too it's like you when people work with you they work with you you don't work for them right and, and and that took a while to put myself in that situation i mean again my first business i started out of college was a commercial cleaning business yeah. again you know first I, well, I first started working cleaning houses but then you know, again, you, you're treated that way when you're cleaning the houses, you know, you're glorified, you know, uh, yeah. housekeeper, housekeeper and everything like that. So I didn't, I never liked that. Um, but when I, I wanted to go commercial, once I finally got commercial, things changed, you know, mm -hmm. things changed. The respect level was there. You know, I was yeah. appreciated as an entrepreneur, not just somebody who right. was working. Um, right, same right. thing with the photography piece, you know, when you were just doing a wedding, which I hate, always hated weddings. Um, but you're doing a wedding, you know, the, the, the random uncle would jump in the middle of your camera and don't even care that, that somebody's paying you to be there, you know, and they literally, I've had seen arguments between, hey, hey, uncle so-and-so, I paid him to be here. Let me take, that's my, I can take pictures too. And I hated yeah. that. So when I was able to go and work with my first job I got with a law firm, I was like, I'm sold. This is the type of work I want to do. Right. With this camera. Commercial do P2B. It. And yeah, and that that was it. And I, you know, and I wrote about that in my, my book. I won't starve. I got a job with a um, law firm. I was taking pictures of them, and it was just so smooth, man. I made a good amount of money. I was done by before lunchtime, and I, <laughs> I made with somebody. You know, my two week check would have been at the hotel. You know, and I nice. had a job. I said, man, this is it. And you know, that was my plan. I just started, you know, doing the market research, getting prepared for that and um you know in the next year or so it actually came to fruition that that was all the business that i was doing nice was those corporate and commercial entities and <clears throat> it worked very very well i never was able to i was always able to make my kids events i was always able to be home for dinner you know what i mean do everything but still make a solid income you know that was respectable nice can i i want to I, I i told you we have a little bit a list of questions but i want to just dip away for a minute ahead, and just talk about something because you you hit this this thing that I love to talk about, uh, and it sounds like you you figured it out early on. Riches and niches, right? Mm -hmm. You can you were photography you're doing photography for weddings and all kinds of things, and you didn't like it, and you said I'm going to go corporate. Did you find that when and you make it sound like right when I found my niche, I'm going to do B two B. Things changed, things evolved for me. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. I mean, it was the same thing with the cleaning. You know, um, I yes. didn't know okay. those two. Would, would correlate like that, but I'm glad I was able to pull back from that, you know, um, that experience I had pr um, previous, in a previous time, it was just like, oh, okay, this is what this, oh, it, it works in this foot on um, this round two, the B to B, this works too. And so, yeah. you know, you go to the exploratory phase, especially being perfectly honest, I didn't have much money. So I was taking whatever was going to come. I mean, I'm working again, $8 an hour job. So if somebody got $500 for me to do an event, I'm like that because that's more than half of my check <laughs> um, on, on two weeks and I'm getting that in one night. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want me to do. You want me to do your birthday party? Fine. You want me to do this, this? And that was fine. But as, you know, my maturity, and, you know, when the business came around, 
I got a, a, a phenomenal opportunity to shoot for a law firm. And again, it was just a whole nother vibe, man. You just walk Like a light bulb went off, right? Yeah, and everybody just welcoming and, hey, what you tell us what to do. We work with you. <laughs> you know, you're, the, you're the professional. And I love right. working with lawyers because they lawyers are the type of individuals, they got enough work to do. They're not calling you in there to do your job. If they're bringing you in, they because they think that you're a professional and they're going to expect you to be the professional. Oh, I loved every minute of that. I and know. So I went in there. And, you know, they let me be creative with them and everything like that. And I still, to this day, can go back and look and see some of these people. And they're still using my images. Some of these people that work for that law firm actually had their own law firms. And I've All been right. able to work with them later. Right. So it was kind of cool. And um, now I don't even do much of that work, photography work anymore, because I've kind of pivoted, pivoted completely into the um, consulting space. Right. But from time to time, when I do, it's always something like that. And they'll, they'll be the same people that will give me a shout. But it, I just saw that it was just a lot more smoother for me. It was what I wanted to do. I want, I didn't want to be dirty, rolling around on the ground and doing all this other stuff to get the shot. You know, it was just cool. I, I got my office right in the heart of the city, uh, right where all of the people, you know, the business entities were. Right, right. I was able to come to my office on a lunch. If I get a contract with a certain office, hey, we got 15 people in here. Let's set up lunch schedules and come on through. And it was just so perfect. It was only in my, it, was, it felt like a big space to me, but it was about 450 square feet, but that was good enough. I was I know. To out and call it a day. Man, my first office I got, uh, it was something like 10 by 10. It was a, a rent when I, my first one I rented. I thought I was in heaven. Yeah. Was 10 definitely. by 10. I said, all right. I, I made it. <laughs> you know, yeah, I know the feeling, but I'm glad we chat a little bit about that with the idea with niches because that's something that is so important, I think, for business owners, especially people who are starting out. Hey, in the beginning, if you had a dollar and you were willing to give it to me, then I was willing to do the work. You know what I mean? I do it. You got if you could pay me this, if you could pay the end, but over time you start to evolve and you say, hey, I can't do this because it takes me away from this. Sounds like you you know I, I mean the wedding is nice money but if I focus on that wedding I can't focus or I can't get this perhaps this lawyer and I need that one that's the better path for me so as you grow and evolve your business start looking for your direction yeah. because then you can improve your process you can improve your pricing you can improve your systems you can become more profitable would you agree yeah more importantly not than your direction your destination because that's what's going to determine your, your direction. You know, when you're saying, hey, you're going to New York, you, if, you're from, if you're in South Carolina where I am, there's only a few directions you can take to get there. <laughs> you know? And like so it. it's one of those situations. And so for me, I understood what I wanted to do. I wanted to be home at night. I didn't want to – another thing, let's think about a wedding, right? I love – you know, it's, a lot of people made a good living off of doing that. But yep. if you, I, even if I charge you $5,000 and you, if you're a good planner of your wedding, you book me this June because you're getting married next June. That's not a lot of money when you, you spread $5,000 over the year. And how many times am I going to have to talk to you? How many times am I going to have to deal with you? How many times am I going to do all this prior to me doing the work on that day? And then how many times am I going to have to deal with you after that until I pr de deliver your product? I'm not getting paid that much money at that point, right? And so mm -hmm. you've overworked me, <laughs> you know, for five thousand dollars. That seemed like it's a lot to somebody, but uh, with the debits and credits of it all, I'm in. I'm behind the scene. I'm behind. You know, I'm behind. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, my my hourly uh, realization then went down and down and down. Now, now you see, you see what I'm saying. So when I can go to a law firm and maybe spend two days with them and get the same five thousand dollars, and I get that check when I'm done. Ooh. That hourly realization went yes. up and up and it up. It looks like a whole other situation. So that was the thing. And then the scrutiny of it, if something didn't come out right, I can still make that lawyer put on a suit the next day or a couple of next again. week and redo the shot. You can't redo the wedding. No way. So you're that's already right. getting a certain amount of money. That's not, you know, after you get past the smoke and mirrors, it's not that much. But then the level of, of stress on that. Yeah. It's a one shot deal. So you were gonna do, you know, you gotta make it happen or you can't. Right. You know, so that type of situation, you gotta, you know, you gotta think about that. So when you're in business, then how how can we put this so we can help somebody who's who's because that was a great well, that was a real life analogy, right? So when you're trying to figure out who you are as a businessman, what would you say? Because you you've given it thought. 
look at the different options that are available in your industry and then choose the one that's going to be most profitable to you. Not every deal is a good deal. Maybe that's the right phrase, right? And figure it out what that might mean for you. It might be good. You might want to be the wedding guy and you might love it and you might do, maybe if you do celebrity weddings, it's, I don't know, but do the research before you define your path. I, I think yeah. maybe that's right. A good well, I way mean, to put it. I, I've done weddings it's not, and, uh, and I made good money off the weddings I've done, but I, I made adjustments. You know, I made adjustments. I said, okay, well, look, you know, I need this amount of money. I, I started telling them, okay, I don't want 50% now and 50% later. Pay me monthly. So at least if I charge you seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000, I can get a monthly stipend from you. I can manage that cash flow. Exactly. Now I created a cash flow for something else going to it. But at the same time, you know, I'm not sitting there waiting. I got this lump sum here. Here's $3,000. That's gone. And then a couple of weeks before that, and now I'm dealing with you two months after the wedding because you don't went on honeymoon. You like this. Now you want a book. You want that. And you want all these things. And you still, I'm still dealing with you. And you're not paying me any more money. Right, right. You know, so I'm getting paid the whole time I'm dealing with you. So it's like when, at the time you calling me about pre-order stuff or, or pre-wedding things, it's still a direct deposit hitting maybe that week or the week after that. So it seems like I'm working, I'm getting paid for the work I'm doing on the time frame. Then I charge right. a little bit more because, that, again, you're dealing with me for months. You're not dealing with me for one day. But it's just, you have to have your exploratory phase in business. And a lot of people Absolutely. don't want to go through the exploratory phase I've done it all. It's not almost nothing I haven't done um, in that realm in a little bit of time that I've been doing it. And so I was able to successfully make that decision from a spot, you know, of I, I knew hey, I wasn't, it wasn't naive to it. And I, I wasn't ignorant to what I can get from this space. I've had wedding photographers approach me and say, how can I get in, you know, to the corporate space? Because they didn't see that, you know, right. Department of Transportation will pay a photographer. Yeah, well, they paid me, you know. Like they thought it was just the truck drivers or construction people. No, they, they need right, right. people like me too. And I've taught other people how to get into that space because those people right. need you as well. Well, that's why you started doing I Won't Star, right? To help others learn. Yes, cool. people, especially my, my you know, minorities, people look like me because, you know, um, they would have these functions that I, they would pay me to shoot. I mean, you know, I've worked with every airport in South Carolina. So the airport would have a function to tell people how to work with them. Nobody, I mean, if it's a 200 people there, you know, it's 10%, maybe less, look like me, you know? And so I'm sitting there, I'm the one shooting. So I get to see everything. I get to right. talk to them about everything. I'm in, this, I'm in the room with everybody. So you're like a sponge just ab ab absorbing as, you, as, you, as, you're earning, as you're earning your check, you're absorbing as exactly. you go. Exactly. And I'm seeing Beautiful. like, okay, and then after a couple of years, I'm starting to see it's the same people. So are they really getting something out of it? And sometimes it's more of the, it, it, it used to be more of the other dignitaries. So maybe the airport's doing it, but the city would come out, the county would come out, the state would come out, the other airports would come to support because this particular local airport is doing it. And so this, 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 and then they make up the 150 out of 200 people. <laughs> so it's not really a bunch of business owners actually getting this amazing information, but they're not there. So yeah. when I did my event, we got a packed house of business owners or potential business owners with only a small amount of those people. And so I got them overworked because <laughs> I got the people in each line going and saying, hey, and then it started being, I was the guy who they say, okay, well, I need people for our program. I want, how can I get a part of your I Won't Star function <laughs> so that mm -hmm. I can get people nice. from your program? Because you got a bunch of people there and I've heard from them they got, they filled up their classes for the whole year just coming from your workshop. Nice. I said, yeah, well, come on, we can talk about it. And then, of course, we worked out some type of financial arrangement, you know, and it went from that, it went from there. So that's how that went. But I, I had to, I had to hold all the keys because, again, that camera put you in places that, you know, me, you I'm cool. Like that with, I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have been at the Super Bowl last year if I didn't know what I was doing with the camera. <laughs> hey, if you need somebody to carry the camera this time, you know, I wouldn't. Nah. <laughs> so me, I'm going to pivot a little bit. Uh, our, our podcast is called Stories of Success. So I love to ask all my uh, interviewees, all my guests, how do you define success? Me personally, I, I define success achieving the goals that you set out for yourself. You know, not for 
I don't judge off of what the world thinks success is. You know, I'm more encourage people to have a goal for yourself. And if you can actually achieve what you said you wanted to do, then you're a success. If you haven't, then you fail. You know, so simple, um, straight, just yeah, straight to the point. You know, because everybody has that. Somebody, you know, I, I teach my people. I say, man, P Diddy has a lot of issues himself. I say his broke just don't look like your broke. I say it's not. I like that. It's the truth. I mean, because P Diddy can have zero amount of money, but the, the just the resources and and the, and the um, relationships that he have, his conversation is never going to be on a thousand dollar level. You know, if he has no money in the bank account, when if he calls somebody and says, I need to have a meeting, it's going to be talking about millions of dollars. Right, right. That day, where somebody like you and I will be talking about thousands of dollars. Yeah, and we Some happy. people talking about hundreds of thousands. Uh, you know, some people just talking about a hundred dollars. But That's right. But that doesn't mean that they don't have financial issues. You know what I mean? They, they have houses that they lost through the recession but they had five of them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So they lost yeah. two and they're like, okay, well, that, that was a hit for them, you know? They had leverages, they had to get rid of businesses or, you know, things of that nature. And I always tell that story because that's somebody who I looked up to growing up and being, at, of course, in that area. You know, I watched how um, Bad Boy Records wasn't making any money, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you go through the recession, he had to sell Sean John, you know, to Macy's. That was his broke moment. Mm -hmm. But he's P. Diddy. You know, yeah. you don't have Sean John or millions of dollars of bad boy records, so your broke moment looks something different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his broke moment is what most of us aspire to. That's just the bottom line. <laughs> Exactly. So success, it got to be on you, not on what the world thinks, because everybody goes through their own situation. So, you know, you got to build your own platform, and you'll, be dictated, you'll dictate your success by the platform that you build. I love it. So, you know, I, I, when, every time I speak to people about success, everybody has different definitions. But what becomes really crystal clear is that success is personal. Definitely. That's what it is. You know, your success is going to be completely different than my success, you know. And we were talking earlier before we got live, right? One of the, first, one of the things that I wanted a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, I, I was... I do taxes. So I'm doing taxes six days a week. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to do this. I, I, don't, I only want to work four days a week. And so that was my goal, man. And I hustled hard and I got to four days a week. I worked four days a week and I felt that was my success because I worked four days and I was still able to eat. Right? So I stayed, I stayed chunky. I stayed chunky and cut off a whole day a week. That was success. And over time it evolved. So it's like this evolutionary thing, but it's always personal. No one else can define your success for you. You yeah. define your own success. So then that said, do you consider yourself successful yet? Yeah, definitely. Hello, I hope you are enjoying this interview thus far. We enjoyed it so much we couldn't get enough. So we extended this particular one, uh, but we broke it up into two parts for you. This is part one of a two-part interview. Uh, stay tuned. The next one follows this. Have a great day.